Hey everyone, Cody here, and today, as promised, we're going to be doing the Pollock style painting. Now, a couple quick notes. One, I'm tired, it's only like 6.30 in the morning, so, but I wanted to get up early to do this video for you guys before it got hot outside. Two, I just noticed that there's like a light and dark kind of thing going on with the background. Um, I don't know what's up with that, but that's pretty cool. Uh, three. So the structure of today's video is going to be like this, this, and then I'm going to head over to the table. I'm going to show you the, the, the paint and the tools that I'll be using. And then because people who almost never work on their yards are out today working on their yards, it's super noisy outside. So I'm going to record the whole painting, but I'll probably put music or narration over it. So you won't actually hear me painting because again, it's very noisy outside today. That is the problem with painting outside. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's head over to the table and I'll show you the paints and the tools that we'll be using today to make the Pollock style painting for my thousand subscriber milestone. Let's head over. Okay, so here are the materials we'll be using today for our Pollock style painting. Um, so let's start with the paint because obviously that's kind of the most important part. Here we have a tan. Uh, it's called a patchy tan. I don't know if you can really see it, but it's it's like a like a beige, almost like a khaki. Uh, I'll be using this on the background of the painting. I wanted to get a color that was kind of like canvas so that I could paint the whole thing, do a base coat, and that it would look almost like if it was raw canvas that I was painting on. So I got a color that's kind of like raw canvas, probably not exactly, but it's going to give it a little bit of off-white so that's gonna make the white pop on the background. And this is gonna be similar to some of Pollock's uh, paintings that just were on raw canvas and then they just had black and white. So that's kind of the, the feel that I'm trying to emulate today. So this is gonna go on the background. Uh, next we have black and white, very self-explanatory, and then we have a light gray. The light gray is for, again, to kind of make it pop. It's going to show up a little differently, and actually, I think, I wasn't going to, but why not? If we're doing the video, let's do it. So, I also have a dark gray called Jet, so we're going to do dark gray, light gray, black, white, and tan on the background. So what I'm going to do is actually grab another can. There we go. And we need another cup. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but anyway. Okay, so those are our colors. That's what we'll be using today. Uh, next, we've got these little mini cans, these quarts with a cup in them. This is because I'm going to thin out the paint. Um, if I just do the paint by itself, it's very thick, so it will do the thin lines, but it won't do like splashes. So we've got to thin it down. And what the ratio that I'm going to be doing today is about four to one. Um, it's not going to be exact because I haven't measured it out, but it's going to be fine. The reason I'm doing, so I'm going to do four, about four parts paint and then one part water. The reason for that particular ratio is simply because if I do more water than that, um, it starts to get like really runny and will only do like these dots. Okay, so I think you can see that. Let me see. Uh, you can't really see it, so. Um, so on this painting right here, you know, you can see like these, the dots from the splash. Um, so this is kind of the effect I'm going for where I want the, like the lines almost. Um, but if it gets too runny, then it just makes a bunch of dots. So I do want dots, but not only dots, if that makes sense. So we're doing about four to one. That will make it, you know, liquidy enough where it's going to not stay on whatever device I'm throwing the paint from, um, but not too runny where I'm just getting dots and no lines at all. All right, so that's that. We've got just a big, ugly brush. Um, the brush is simply to paint the background, so I don't really care that it's ugly. Um, I think. 
got some scissors, so I'm gonna trim this real quick. Okay, so got that trimmed down. Perfect. Um, so we've got our brush to paint the background. This uh, is just water. I've got water to thin it here um, if I need to. This will probably be mostly for the background so that I can spread the paint out amongst the canvas. Uh, the water is to dilute the paints, obviously. And then, gloves because it's going to be super messy, I already know it. And lastly, our painting devices. So, I'll be using a small paintbrush. Um, when I dip it into the paint and throw it, it's going to give it, I'm going to get more on the paint, um, on the canvas at one time. So this will give us like big arcs and big splotches. Um, this is actually just a, a paintbrush without the actual painty part, the brushy part I should say. Um, it almost looks like a wand, like Harry Potter, but um, this is for thin lines and th small thin splashes. You could use really either side and it will give us different effects. Um, Paul tended to use the back of paintbrushes so that's why we're going to do that. Lastly are the paint sticks themselves. So I actually got to grab another one. So I'll be using an extra color. The paint stick is kind of my primary tool when painting, uh, a Pollock style painting. The, the paint stick is just really good for this type of painting. It, it's got a lot of, like the size is good because it, it, you can put some paint on the end. Um, it's, it's nice to hold, so it's got like a nice kind of shape to it. So when you're flicking, you can kind of get a lot of control because it's thin, so you can, you know, do like a downward flick, you can flick at an angle. It's very easy to use because it's kind of long, you can get a lot of, um, I guess, momentum into it. So this was my primary uh, tool for Pollock style paintings. All right, so now that we have all of our tools established, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, dilute our paints. So I'm going to stir the paints and then I'm going to mix them into the cups with water to thin them out. And then we're going to put them in here so that, you know, we can use these to paint out of instead of these huge cans that I have to carry around every time. And that way it's already diluted. And then if there's a bunch left, then I can just store it later. So let's go ahead and dilute the paints and uh, get them into the paint cans.
Okay, so here are all our colors. They're all mixed in, they're all diluted. Now, I'll be honest, I think I may have diluted them a little too much. Um, again, I didn't really measure it, so I think I probably did dilute them a little too much, but it's okay, it's still gonna work. Um, if we have to, we'll use brushes because the brushes will absorb some of that paint. But now that we've got everything, we're gonna go ahead and head outside and go ahead and start the actual painting. And again, I won't be able to record outside because it's very noisy. Well, you won't be able to hear the sound of the painting. I'll go ahead and put something over it. Um, but now let's get to the fun part. Okay, so I've applied the base coat. I'll just show it to you real quick. It's hard to see probably because of the sun. Now, I chose to go one direction with the paint. You can see that there's these little waves. I purposely wanted that in there. Um, one, because it kind of reminds me of canvas going one direction. But two, I just like the look of it. <laughs> so I'm gonna let this dry. It's gonna take a few minutes and then we will continue. So while the paint is drying for the base coat, I figured I'd talk about the layering. So the, we have four colors to work with. We've got black, white, dark gray, and light gray. What I wanna do is kind of layer them in order of light to dark. So what I'll probably do is I'm going to do black, and then I'm gonna do dark gray, and then light gray, and then white and if I have to I'll do one more coat of black because when you do black as kind of the base color you know it, it kind of frames out the painting and it, it gives it like a nice layer to start on especially if everything else after it is lighter then you can it kind of gives it like almost like a like a shadow or something where it, it pushes those colors up so you can see them so I'm gonna go light to dark or, sorry dark to light and then if I have to, I'll put a little bit more black on at the end. And the reason for that is because then by the end, sometimes there's just too many of the other colors to see the black. So it's like they almost get, it almost gets swallowed up in those other colors. So you add a little bit more to kind of balance it back out and to put that back on top. So, I mean, we'll go, we'll kind of go, uh, see as we go and we'll just, you know, if we need an extra color, it, a lot of it's intuitive. See, the thing I think that Pollock kind of understood about this that I think some other artists who try to emulate the style don't understand is that it's, it's more intuitive than it is mechanical or formulaic, right? It's not necessarily about having exact amounts of things like, uh, you know, painting, like measuring the paint, right? I'm, I'm, I have a strong feeling he didn't measure it exactly to be one quarter water or whatever. He just thinned it until he was comfortable with it. You know, the amount of colors that he added, you know, a lot of it I think was just intuitive and he just added what he felt was needed for that painting to balance it out or make it complete or whatever it is. So that's kind of how these paintings go. A lot of it is intuitive. Like you want to add the colors how much balance do you need? That's why in some paintings you see only two colors. In other paintings of his, you see like two or three colors and then splashes of, of just little tiny splashes of other colors, but not, not a lot, just because it gives it a little bit of character. So anyway, uh, I think the paint's about dry. So, and even if it's a little wet, that's okay. We can go ahead and start actually painting on the wet paint or yeah, painting on the wet paint. Of the of the background will actually absorb some of that color so it'll kind of splash it out and keep it there so i'm going to go ahead and get started uh, i'm going to start with the black and then dark gray light gray white black and oh and i will let the layers dry in between i have not done that in the past videos 
especially the one that's kind of like on the home page right now where it shows like orange and yellow and stuff it's like the colors of like convergence um, I didn't really let it dry so because of that the, the layers kind of ran together but I really want this to be a proper painting that I would make and sell so the uh, I will let the layers dry in between you may not see that due to editing but I figured I'd let you know because if you don't hear the actual painting itself that is going on that I am letting those layers dry for a little bit before I move on to the next one so at least congeal or harden so that I can stack the next layer of paint on top of it so I think it's had enough time it's been a few minutes it's already getting hot outside let's get to painting So I wanted to take a minute to talk about the paint. You can see already that there is a lot of dots. Like I said earlier, I did dilute it too much. This is not a problem, but it is kind of an issue because what that's going to do is it's just going to make a lot of splashes and not enough lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to fix that with a paintbrush because if I use a paintbrush, it's going to absorb a lot of that paint um, and then I can do lines with it. And then if not, we will just add more paint. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry because um, it's already taken up a lot of it. If I keep going, then it's going to swallow it up. Okay, so while the layer of black is drying, I'll give it a couple minutes just to kind of thicken. Um, I wanted to talk about the effects that you get with the thinness of the paint. So if you use gloss enamel right out of the can, do not dilute it at all, you get really thick lines. I mean, you get very, uh, very clean, I guess, lines. The lines are very, like, thin. Okay, so this is a good example. You can kind of see this, and I can't pull it out because it's wedged in there. But this painting, you can see these lines, right? Even, even in the background of the video, you can see how clear those lines are. That's because that paint was not diluted. So I just literally stuck uh, a paint stick or a rubber spatula or something like that in there and then just kind of drizzled the lines. So if you're going for an effect where you have solid lines, that is how you would do it. I did do a painting called Catalyst that I don't have anymore that I love that painting. And that's what I did. I painted the background red and then I just did black and white lines on it and it looked really cool actually. I Maybe I'll do another one. I've got the size canvas that I did it on so maybe I'll do another one. But my point is is that if you go to wet then you get something like this where it's all dots. No lines, just dots. And I actually did dilute it too much today so we're gonna have a very splashy painting. Um, not really an issue because every painting is kind of its own, but that's the type of painting we're going to get today. So that is that. And then if you want something kind of like with lines but broken up or a little bit diluted, then you would just add a little bit of paint, which I should have done. I, add, I should have added just a little tiny bit of paint, but it's just the way that it goes. Um, I had never measured it out like this, so that's why it's so runny today. But we're just going to work with it. I mean, I could add more paint or I could try to start over with it, but I'm not going to do any of that. We're just going to work with it and we're going to see what it gets us. But anyway, I think that it's probably had a, a few minutes to dry, so let's head back over and start on the next layer. Alrighty, well, actually, I'm gonna show you guys what we've got so far. Little, little, uh, uh cribs thing, where you, I don't know. <laughs> so, here's, we've got the, uh, the dark gray and the black on there. Got some decent lines going, a lot of splash, more splash than I wanted, but it's turning out okay. Let's see if we can get it that way. Yeah, it's a pretty decent shot right there. Um, so that's what we got so far. Now we'll kind of move into the light gray. And I gotta do what I can before my phone overheats. So let's go ahead and uh, get.
get to it. Got a brush, just in case. Throw that bad boy down. Okay, so we have got the layers on there, but it is a lot of paint and they are starting to run together. So I need to let these dry for about probably 10 minutes or so before we move on to the next one, because if not, they're gonna start swallowing each other up. So we need to let these dry before we uh, do white and then black again. Okay, so while the painting is drying, I thought I'd take a moment to kind of talk about a couple of things. First, um, I'm using a lot of paint, more than I wanted to. That is because it was so thin I had to switch to the brushes to get lines, which made the lines thicker, which is taking up more of the painting. Now, this really isn't an issue per se. However, it's more paint than I wanted to use. Second, I will be doing black next, not white. And the reason for that is because you can see that there's already a stacking effect here of black and then dark gray and then light gray. If I go white, that's that's probably gonna kinda get lost in that light gray, and I don't want it to get lost. I really want the distinct layers. So we're gonna have to switch over to black instead so that we can put another dark color on top of the light gray so that when I put on white, you see that. Um, lastly, I mean, it's not bad. So uh, it's turning out better than I expected but not as good as I'd hoped, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, we'll kind of take a look at it at the end, but overall, it's kind of cool. I mean, it definitely has a nostalgic feel to it uh, of, you know, an old Pollock style painting, um, but we'll, you know, we'll look at it when it's done. So give this a couple more minutes to let the layers dry and then we'll move on to black and then white. All right, so waiting is the hardest part and I can't wait anymore. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add the black now. It's only been a few minutes since I showed you the other clip, but it is starting to congeal. Um, I put my finger to some of the paint and it left indents, which means it's starting to congeal. And I'm not gonna, I don't plan on doing a whole lot of black, just enough to break it up. So let's go ahead and add it. Okay, so once again, the black is too thin, so it's just making splashes. And this is what I was talking about earlier. If you thin it too much, it only makes dots. So you can see that it's only making these big dots right here. It's not making any lines, and I don't want the whole painting to be dots. However, it's kind of nice because it breaks it up, um, but I don't want too many. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it for that, or for now. And we'll just go ahead and add white right now. So now it's kind of covered too much in the white. So lastly, what we're gonna do is we're going to go over it with every color and balance it out. Okay, so it's done. This is the final painting. It, uh, it might be hard to see because of the sun. I'll try to fix it in editing if possible. But uh, that is the final painting. I know me casting a shadow doesn't really help. But that is it. Now, I'm going to zoom in on some of the textures here. I, uh, this painting didn't turn out as good as I hoped. Um, I thinned out the paint too much. That's the problem. So you, hopefully you can learn from my mistake. 
if you do these paintings only add just a tiny bit of water to your paint so that it just makes it a little thinner to break it up but not too thin that it only makes the dots because once you have all these dots you start to lose the painting um i wouldn't say that i hate it but i don't like it either and uh again it's because there's too much splash and just didn't turn out good so anyway uh i hope you enjoyed the video we you know i made the painting as promised there it is and we will make another one in the future maybe at the next 500 subscribers and we'll make it better we'll just add just a tiny bit of water to the paint just to break it up but we'll uh we'll get cleaner lines so that the next one is better but that's it i hope you guys enjoyed i'll catch you guys in the next one take care